uh, wanted to take some time today to uh, uh, go through a build that's going to be an easy entry point for folks that, or for guys that are just starting uh, their building adventure. Let's call it uh, the novice builder. Uh, so what I've what I've done is I've I've made a bow where I'm I'm going to take you through the build on this particular bow. It is a uh, basically a, a long bow, an English style long bow made of cedar, uh, backed with rawhide. Got a cork handle on here, but you could put any type of handle you want on there. But I'm going to go through this build uh, in a particular way. So there is not a power tool in use on this particular bow at all. Uh, I wanted to put something together that would be something that's within easy reach for a new boyer uh, just starting out. I'll go through the procurement of our cedar, which is incredibly easy and inexpensive, as well as the rawhide backing. And guys, I'm not using dog chews on the back of this bow. Uh, it is inexpensive to build. It is easy to construct. Uh, incredibly easy with hand tools and even right down to sandpaper. Uh, it covers a lot of very basic bow building uh, tenants from tillering to finishing uh, to wood removal and etc. And so this is a pretty valuable build for you guys starting out. Uh, the bow itself uh, will have an elliptical tiller to it uh, like this and I don't think I can get the whole bow to fit on the screen uh, but this is how Bow tillered, and it is really, guys, red cedar on an English longbow, similar to you, uh, it creates a very stunning bow. And so, hang out with me for a little bit here, and I will, I will take you guys through this build. Here is our quote-unquote stave for this build. Um, it is in fact a split cedar rail for cedar fencing. Uh, and I wanted to uh, do it this way uh, just to uh, show you guys what's available, uh, readily available, even just over at the lumber yard. Uh, something that you want to look for when you are picking out your uh, your piece of wood. And hopefully, I hope we can see this. The grain should just be really, really tight. Really tight. So this is the opposite of like a hardwood where you want real thick growth rings with a lot of summer growth uh, versus spring growth. This is... Uh, you know, juniper of sorts. And we want those growth rings to be as close together as possible. That gives it more strength and more compression uh, capability. Got this thing cut down to 70 inches. I'm gonna make a 68 inch bow or somewhere in that neighborhood, 68 to, uh, you know, 66 or 68 inches long. Uh, you can see that it is, for all intents and purposes, pretty straight. Um, and it has been split down its edges, right? So there's, there's not a blade that has really touched this. It's been split. And so we're going to go ahead and, and split it rather than try to, to take a saw to it. So I've got a few different uh, pieces to work with. So right here, I got what will make... Uh, it's a little on the thin side on the underside, uh, but still can make a good bow. So we'll get a we'll get something probably smaller, lighter out of this guy right here, and then this guy here, the original backing, and we'll have the we'll have the sapwood and the heartwood uh, appearance on there. A little bit of a knot right in here, so that'll give us something fun to work with. Uh, but this is going to be the one that uh, is the subject of this video right here. Our situation is just about perfect. If you look here, let's see if I can see the string sits off the back all the way down from end to end. It is like just 
just enough setback from end to end that I can get this to stretch perfectly straight across the length of that stave. So we're going to be able to get a nice easy layout on this guy. I'm, I'm doing the, the major reduction with a uh, uh, draw knife, uh, kind of a traditional way of making a, a uh, bow. And I don't know if you can see on film, my line is right here. And just like if you were using power tools or whatever, you're going to want to get down to within like an eighth or so of that line, but not go straight down to it. So the idea is to get close, but not go past that line. And so we'll work the top side here to get close to that line, or the back rather, where we've got everything laid out, and then come back and clean up these edges to true up that complete that complete edge. So we'll we'll taper down in here and then come back and straighten everything up to that. Alright, so we'll get a just an ever so slightly beveled edge this way, but not past our pencil line in any in any event. So we're just gonna take it down real close and then true up our edge. Alright guys, here we are. Um, roughed out. Uh, it took me probably, I don't know, half hour, 45 minutes. You can kind of see the grip work there too. So when, when you are working your draw knife, you always want to work toward the tip of your stave uh, to keep from lifting any splinters. If you go backwards, you're going to lift a splinter, which makes it kind of tricky to get the, the grip part done. So you want to work down a little bit on this end and then work a little bit on this end and then meet in the middle so the splits work together until you get down to where you want to be uh, on that grip. Before I go about taking the back down, uh, I wanted to, or I was noticing or realizing that once I do that, I'm going to lose my layout. Uh, and I don't, don't necessarily want to lose these dimensions. So what I did was take a, a compass and right on the center line and each layout line, I poked a hole deep down in there, probably quarter of an inch, maybe even, maybe even three eighths of an inch. Cedar's very soft in that way. And so I just poked a hole straight down so that when I, when I go taking everything off, I'll be able to use these as indexing lines or indexing dots to know where you can see each dot there. So I'll know my layout. I struck a line that kind of split that sapwood right in half. So I just ran my pencil right along this edge here and I'm going to, with my draw knife, take that down. Uh, I've got a similar, similar line on the other side here. So uh, we should be pretty well in order. Um, I'm going to take my draw knife and work down to those lines on both sides. I'm going to try and leave just a little little bit of a crown here. It'll make it easier to apply the rawhide when it comes time to putting the rawhide on. So the idea here is to be as uh, consistent with following that back grain as possible. But remember that the... the uh, Let's see if I can get a better view on this side. The growth rings are so tight that trying to follow a single one is going to be uh, difficult, if not impossible. Okay, I've knocked down that backing uh, to be right, right about down to that pencil line that I struck along that edge. So there's side one, side two. And I followed the, uh, I followed all of the indulations of the uh, piece. Not that there were very many. There really weren't very many. This is about, you know, as straight grained as you get with a, you know, uh, stave type of uh, scenario so 
the uh, the little waves here and there are really not amounting to a whole heck of a lot, but I did follow them. It's important that you do uh, so that your back and your belly are bending in unison. So it's important uh, for the tillering portion of this that you keep uh, that back shape, the shape of the back intact. Okay, so this is uh, where we're at. And then just to uh, kind of show you, and I'm not sure if you can see them here are my index punctures there. So I can go back and lay out or re redraw my layout on this bow. All right, so I've removed some of the sapwood and reestablished my markings for the outline of the bow. And I wanted to take a quick update on the layout. So I want a four inch grip and my fades are actually four inches long, not two inches long. So I wanted these fades to be much longer. And in the original layout, I did an inch and a half wide and I want to do an inch and a quarter. So I've, I've re, redone my lines here and I'm going to reduce this again. So I have roughed it out to uh, the front side profile here. You'll probably see the lines just in what I was putting together or what I was taking down here. Uh, I have put the fade marks in, the grip, grip mark, fade, and then out to the tip. And what I did was put a, a half inch mark here from the back. And then up at the start of the fade, a 7 8 inch mark. Same on the other side. And to the best of my ability, took a pencil, you know, and as I'm scribing it, started putting the angle on my hand so that as I got down to the end, I'm at a half inch. Uh, I don't know how accurate it is, to be real honest with you. It's good enough. And... We're going to just take down on an angle. Again, we're going to do faceted tillering on this, guys. So uh, not much room to make too big a mistake. So we'll take we'll take and chamfer we'll chamfer this edge down to the line, and then we'll take off the bulk of the peak. Do the same on the other side. Uh, do both do that for both limbs, and then we start getting a little more in tuned to what we need to do in terms of removal to get even bends. I have taken this down now, kind of give us a, you know, we're starting to get that bow shape going on. A uh, little note to look at is when you start seeing these feathered pieces of grain running out the length of your limb and, and the, the grain on here is very, very tight as I had mentioned, as far as the selection of the piece of wood goes, that's a real good indicator that you're getting a good taper on your limb. So it's not a all, uh, all inclusive indicator, but it's a very good signpost that you are getting what you need in terms of a taper on that limb. Working closer now to more of a, a fine wood removal to start getting this bow to bend. I have graduated from a draw knife to a spoke shave. Um, if you guys haven't got a spoke shave, they're a pretty valuable tool for bow building. Had this for an awfully long time. And what it does is really kind of takes a lot of the bumps and hills and valleys out of the wood as you're going along. And so if, it's kind of tough to see here in the light, but all my feathered ends really are feathered all the way out here to the tip. So I've got feathered grain running all the way through. And a lot of that kind of chip marking that the draw knife leaves has been eliminated through the use of, of uh, spoke shave. Right quick, uh, show you guys how that spoke shave works or what it does for the, the grain itself. So I have worked out that far end right there and I'm going to work out uh, 
have this other end. So I'll try and show you. Some nice feathered ends running there so you can see that it's it's tapered pretty evenly. This next side not so much you can see it's kind of got that rough hewn look to it from the draw knife. And so I'm going to take this down with the spoke shave kind of show you what the uh, what it does for on this piece of wood. So as with any part of our tilling, we're faster, we're doing faster tilling. So we're gonna take off, we're gonna chamfer our edges and then work back toward the center. And it'll be nice long strokes all the way out to the tip. And this was the side that had a little bit of a knot in it. So we've got a, a little bit of a dip in the grain. So we're gonna have to work this this little spot out pretty carefully and try and get some of our taper pushed back into the bow here. And that's where a fairly aggressive, not super aggressive, just a slightly aggressive file will help you to recognize and get those areas going. Now, I would suggest you use the flat side of your file so that you can keep, you can keep a flat, you can adjust your tool on a flat surface without digging in with a rounded surface. All right, we've got some grain going on right here that's going to require a little bit of special attention. And so, here's what a uh, dry knife can do for you, or not a dry knife, but a spoke shave can do for you. Note right here that we've got a little bit of a hump going on, and it is you can see the dip right there. And so we don't want that to happen. Unless, of course, it is in coincidence with the back. All right, so if the back takes a turn, we want the belly to take a turn. All right, and feel for it to be, feel with your fingers to ensure that you're getting thinner and thinner and thinner all the way through. And I can feel right here it's a hump on the back. That's where our knot was. So we had a knot in the original stave. We knew that we were going to have to work with it a bit. We've worked down below it, but the wave in the grain is still here. Once you've established a good taper on your limbs, this is the part where you start uh, just taking down weight. So I'll give this a good floor tiller and you can see it's bending but it's still really tough to, uh, real tough to get that bend. So we are a long ways off from 55 pounds as far as our uh, initial tiller is concerned. And so as we work through our initial reduction here, uh, just like, just like uh, Dean Torges talks about in his uh, book as far as tillering is concerned, we reduce weight on our sides and we work tiller on our belly. Now, I'm taking wood off and, and guys, it's valuable to have a very sharp spoke shave for this. I take material off my edges here just to really set up the removal across the belly. And again, like I mentioned, once you've got a good, a good taper established, you are now just working it down get yourself into the ballpark of where you want to be as far as weight is concerned. And so I'll continue to take down material just like this. You can kind of get into a rhythm. It gets a little hypnotic, but you got to remember to stop and check your tiller regularly. 
And at some point you can probably start counting how many, how many runs you gotta go to get a certain effect on your bow. Uh, and whatever that is, it is what it is. I just go until um, I feel like I've taken a, enough wood to have a, an effect that I'm looking for. And you wanna address this tool at different angles across across your belly uh, to ensure that you don't gouge out and get washboard effects on your limb. And you can start to feel the bend as you're taking wood off. And so really frequent tiller checks, and you can see that's already bending quite a bit more. At least I can feel that it's easier to bend it to that degree uh, than it was before I took off that group of uh, shavings. Oh. I'm going to just continue to take off wood until I got a really good floor tiller that puts it somewhere in the neighborhood of about 55 pounds, probably more like 60 or 65 because we want to come in a little bit heavy uh, and then lighten it up. But uh, I'm going to continue taking wood off both sides just as I had uh, shown you and described. And I will bring you back on board once we've got a good floor tiller that feels about right.